let's take a, the proton and the electron inside of a hydrogen atom. So let's say you have a hydrogen atom here. You have one proton and you have an electron. Let's find the electrical force between the proton and the electron inside the hydrogen atom. And let's also find the gravitational force between them and compare them so we can get an idea of what they are equal to. The electrical force is going to be 9 times 10 to the 9th, that's the K, times the, the charge of each, since it's, it's the same, uh, then you square it, right? 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 squared. And since they're oppositely charged, that means the force is attractive. They attract each other. The proton attracts the electron. The electron attracts the proton. OK, so this is the electrical force. Divided by their distance squared. The, dif the distance between the electron and the proton in a hydrogen atom is roughly of the order of uh, an, an angstrom, which is 10 to the minus 10 meters. Uh, I mean, we could get the exact number here, but my, the idea of this example is not to get the exact, exact force, but to get a rough idea. So the distance is 10 to the minus 10 meters, and then you square that, right? The distance squared. So this will give us an idea of what that force is equal to. So we could perform this calculation 9 times 1.6 squared, and then we could do the, the power of the 10 separately. Now, this gives you, this is, by the way, an illustration of we're going to have things, calculations like this quite often in this, uh, in this uh, chapter. And what I want you to do, I don't want you to do the power of the 10s necessarily on the calculator. You could do that yourself. You waste sometimes a lot of time by doing the calculations on the calculator. I, I, I want you to do the, the scientific notation yourself. This is 10 to the 9th. This is 10 to the minus 38. And then down here is 10 to the minus 20. So why waste time doing that on the calculator? You could just do that. And then this is going to be 10 to the minus uh, 29, right? 9 minus 38. And then the 20 is going to go over there. It's going to make that 10 to the minus 9, you see? So then the only th part you have to do is 9 times 1.6 squared. times 10 to the minus 9. Two point three times ten to the minus eight newtons. Let's find the gravitational force between the electron and the proton. Okay. Six point six seven times ten to the minus eleven. So the universal constant of gravity is small. Okay. Times the mass of the electron. The mass of the electron is nine point one one times ten to the minus thirty one. The mass of the proton is one point six uh, two seven times 10 to the minus 27. So that's the mass of the electron. That's the mass of the proton times the distance divided by the distance between them squared. So we could collect the numbers here. And then do the powers of the 10 separately. 10 to the minus 20. 10 to the minus 11. Well, actually, let's just combine them. 11, 31 is uh, 42, and 27 is 69. And then over that, that's going to be a really small number.
So what is that? Nine point eight nine times ten to the minus forty eight newtons. Okay. So the electrical force between the electron and the proton is ten to the minus eight. The gravitational force is ten to the minus forty eight. So if I were to ask you, why does the electron go around the proton? Is it due to the gravity between them, or is it due to the electrical force between them? Is due to the electrical force. Is there a gravity, gravitational force between them? There, yes, there is, yeah. But it's very insignificant. If it was only their gravitational force, would they still go around each other? Let's say they were electrically neutral. Would they still go around each other? Do planets go around the sun? Yeah, they would still go around each other but much, much, much slower. Their energy would be much smaller. And so what we, would, what we would do, if the electron and the proton were neutral, they could still go around each other, but what that would change is that would change the, that would change this whole spectral lines. You see this, the spectral lines of uh, the atoms? Because the spectral lines are due to the fact that the, when the electron jumps from the n equals two orbit to the n equals one orbit, it releases energy, and it gives a certain kind of energy, right? But if, if they were going around each other, just due to their gravity, the energy would be much smaller. So the light that they would emit would be a lot, lot less energetic. So they wouldn't be visible at all. I don't think there would be any uh, visible spectral lines. Forget the, the number in front for now. That's of the order of 10 to the 40. You see? So that's what cosmologists say. Cosmologists say when the gravitational force split off, the electrical force split off, all the forces of the mother force split off, and now in the cosmos we have four forces. The gravitational force is the weakest of all the four. The electrical force dominates the gravitational force over for small objects, okay? On the atomic scale, the gravitational force is almost like non-existent. One of the reasons, one of the things that they're trying to find out is why is the gravitational force so weak? Why is it so weak compared to the electrical? And then electrical force is weak compared to the strong nuclear force because the strong nuclear force is even much stronger. It keeps, it keeps the protons from the protons inside of the atom repel each other, don't they? They're all plus charges. Have you ever thought in your mind, why don't the protons kick each other out of the nucleus? The, the neutron is a neutral. The, 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 the force that you're trying to think about is called the strong nuclear force. The strong nuclear force is the glue that keeps the protons from kicking each other out of the nucleus. So the strong nuclear force is even stronger than the electrical, electrical force, okay? So one of the answers that they have and that I've heard of is that the gravitational force is a force that leaks out of our dimension, okay? It leaks out of our four-dimensional universe into the other dimensions. So it doesn't stay in our dimension. So this is, of course, beyond the, we're not going to talk about that a lot in our course, but I'm just giving that to you as a thought. The gravitational force is still important, though, but it's only important on a macroscopic scale. Gravitational force is what keeps the Earth going around the sun. It's what, gravitational force is what keeps us on the uh, Earth. And gravitational force is what causes stars to form. Stars wouldn't form without it. So on a macroscopic scale, it's very important, but not on an atomic scale. 